Uh, the, <laughs> the place where this kind of reform needs to go on in the American political ecology is cities. That's not because it wouldn't be great if we could do it at a state level like North Dakota. It's because progressive forces for a variety of reasons don't have many states in which progressives run the government. Uh, at the moment, there are actually only seven of the 50 states uh, that have Democratic governors and Democratic control of both houses of the legislature. Uh, and that's not to say all those Democrats would be too crazy about this either. Uh, but it's a pretty it's a pretty grim landscape and those of the seven states all of them are quite small except California Which is in many ways not just my you know my home my home state, but uh, uh, Really carving quite a, a, a distinct political profile the place to do this is cities uh, I think it's fair to say that cities have never had as distinctive as distinct a political profile in American political life as they do today of the 30 largest American cities, 25 of them have Democratic mayors. Again, not all of them exactly champions for this kind of thing. It's hard to imagine, let us say, Mayor Rahm Emanuel of Chicago <laughs> uh, uh, getting, getting behind this sort of thing. Uh, but that said, uh, uh, 25 out of 30 is the greatest partisan imbalance since God only knows when. Uh, I actually had some interns, bless them, at the American Prospect try to find you know, an earlier time when this sort of thing could be found, and it, they couldn't, uh, and that wasn't their fault. Uh, the, uh, in, uh, I became sort of aware of this when I realized that when Bill de Blasio was elected mayor of uh, New York, uh, a city where this issue is particularly tricky, given that uh, in, in New York, the Wall Street economy is a big chunk of the you know, municipal economy, as, as it is not elsewhere. Uh, but that he was one of only a number of members of sort of the class of 13 of, of, of people elected with really new urban political coalitions uh, that have come together in, uh, in, in, in many cities for, for, for two kinds of reasons. First, cities are where uh, the demographic change uh, in the United States has been greatest. And cities uh, are the place where uh, the possibility of these groups developing some aut autonomous institutions uh, and coming together in progressive coalitions has proved uh, mo uh, most possible. So you see uh, coalitions of, uh, of, uh, for, for immigrant rights, uh, the successor groups to ACORN in the African American communities, uh, Enviro groups, uh, general progressive groups, uh, other, uh, uh, other organizations really have formed, I think, uh, uh, novel progressive coalitions that have brought all kinds of uh, uh, people open to reforms, hopefully like this, to power uh, ac across the map, in, uh, in the Bay Area, obviously, but also in Seattle, in Minneapolis, uh, in, uh, in places you would not expect, in, 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 in Phoenix. I mean, if you ever want to check a, a disparity between city and state. Look at the position on immigrant rights in Phoenix versus Arizona. You're in two different worlds. Uh, so uh, uh, I, I think that is the arena uh, that we need uh, uh, to focus on. And I'm really glad that uh, you had a good meeting today and I hope it goes uh, well. And if the Post news pages don't cover it, I will get around to uh, uh, columnizing on it uh, at, at some point. Yeah. Uh, okay. Back to uh, uh, Raymond Moley and Franklin Roosevelt. If you'll remember, when we left them, Moley said, well, the problem with Carter Glass, it's, is, you know, he, he really wants this guy, Russell Leffingwell, uh, uh, who's a number two at J.P. Morgan, to be his number two. Now, J.P. Morgan was sort of famously headquartered at the time at 23 Wall Street. So Roosevelt thought it over, silent for a minute, and then he said, no, we can't have anyone from 23. That's not a bad position, uh, I think, for progressives mm. to take, particularly as we contemplate another, uh, d uh, the possibility of another Democratic presidential administration. <laughs> uh, it, it, and and uh, one column I will be writing probably next week, not, not tomorrow, but uh, that's done, but, but for next week, I mean, you know, we, 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 we know that Bernie Sanders uh, uh, is, is a form of left pressure on Hillary Clinton not just Bernie Sanders. This is the base of the Democratic Party, which clearly has moved left. The center of the Democratic Party has moved left. It's not just that the left is more visible. 
the percentage of people in the Democratic Party who identif self-identify as liberal has grown remarkably uh, in the last uh, uh, several years. Uh, among young people, there is, uh, according to some polling, as much support for socialism as there is for capitalism. Uh, I will tell you, as one of these self-avowed socialists, that if we asked, were asked to define socialism, it would be tricky. Nonetheless, <laughs> gi uh, given uh, notwithstanding this lack of clarity, uh, 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 the, the, there is the experience, particularly of young people, uh, with the actual existing American economy of the last seven years in particular, but even way, way back before then, uh, has been pretty uh, grotesque. And, and, and so we're seeing this <coughs> as a basis of support. So I think of the uh, many issues in which not just Bernie Sanders, but the rest of us sh should be pressing uh, an, any incoming uh, uh, democratic uh, political figures. And I think a winner of an issue because uh, the fear and loathing of the big banks transcends the left. It is a, a, a feature across the American political spectrum, which is not to say it's really getting very far given who's in power in different places, but uh, if, if, you know, I, I think that that sentiment is, is clearly there. It would, it would behoove us, I haven't used the word behoove in a talk in God knows how long, it would behoove <laughs> us uh, to uh, uh, take this uh, nobody from 23 and expand it to what we want in the people running the financial uh, uh, policy of the United States in the next administration. I don't think we need another uh, generation of folks from Goldman Sachs. Uh, uh, and I, can, I, 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 I used to know their street address, so I could say nobody from, what, I've forgotten the number now, but anyway. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't think we need anybody uh, from, yes, yeah, so, so the, the, my, my, my point is this, I think this should be uh, uh, something uh, that uh, becomes a, uh, an actual demand of American progressivism at this moment. Uh, no more Wall Street guys, uh, and they are have been guys by and large, uh, running our financial policy, whether Republicans or Democrats are in the White House. Uh, yes, there are exceptions. There is Nomi, there's a, 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 f uh, a couple of private equity firms I know that, that basically only uh, deal with uh, unionized firms and don't discharge people. Uh, just try to turn around uh, for the workers' benefits as well as the owners' benefits. Uh, there are the rare banker like Ron Bloom who uh, uh, went, uh, left Wall Street and uh, worked for the steel workers for years trying to save the pensions of the hundreds of thousands of steel workers who were getting completely screwed as the industry went into, uh, went into collapse. Uh, yes, there are some. Um, well, this is a line of, you know, you, you would save Sodom if there were three just men or whatever, however, however that works. Uh, but but I, I see no reason why this shouldn't be uh, a, a, a demand uh, that uh, we, we go forward with. Uh, you know, and it look, ever since Occupy Wall Street, uh, one of the most revealing th things, I think, in American politics of the last several years is the fact that Occupy Wall Street actually polled pretty well. Uh, you know, a bunch of, uh, uh, of disproportionately scruffy people uh, in an urban park, that tends not to poll very well. Uh, uh, the, the, you know, they, they had these uh, episodes with the police. They, generally speaking, that doesn't necessarily poll very well either. Uh, but the basic message of Occupy Wall Street uh, managed to command majority support in the polls uh, throughout their... Uh, uh, most of their uh, time on the stage. Um, that sentiment is still there, and we need it both to uh, help us get to things like public banking, and more, more significantly than that, since public banking is ultimately just a means to an end, we need it to help build uh, the kind of just more just economy and livable society in which we all hope to live. Thank you.